Well, can somebody shout praise the Lord? My, it's so good to see all of you this wonderful Wednesday night. How many came with expectancy? How many came with believing God's going to do something in a Bible study on a Wednesday night? We're in a Mr. Revival spirit. How many is excited? I mean, how many is really excited about what God's doing? Amen. Let's stand together, if you will. Has God been good to you? Are you glad? Has he made you glad? Has he really made you glad? Let's worship with the praise singers, please.
Has he filled you with joy? Has he really made you glad? I said last night, well, we had a good prayer service last night. But I said every time I come through those doors, I'm coming with expectancy. I'm expecting something good to happen. I want to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and to his courts with praise. And so I'm so glad we're here. We want to pray right now. There's a lot of needs. I, I got a phone call this afternoon. Many of y'all know Mr. Bill Murphy. And uh, he had passed, and be praying for that family. And the one that had the accident, uh, I read today that they did have some severe injuries. But continue lifting them up in prayer. And also we have uh, missionaries. We're going to be praying for him and all of our leaders. I'm going to tell you, we're going to have revival in this trouble. I said the church is going to have revival amidst this trouble and situation. So we're going to be praying for Sister uh, Tony Delaney, Brother Steve Goldman, uh, Sister Jessica will be praying for her. I said, there's a lot of needs in here. Jason Cooper. Anybody got a need? Just lift your hand and show me you've got a need. You know God is looking down and he sees every one of these needs right now. He knows every thought and every intent of your heart. Now would you lift your other hand? Would you lift a voice? I mean, speak out to God. God, we love you. Oh, we thank you, Lord, for the mighty presence we feel this Wednesday night. Thank you, Lord, for revival. And thank you, Lord, for the touch you've already given men and women, boys and girls. God, we expect something great and wonderful happen. Touch the knees, the hands that was lifted. God, touch these situations that's here right now. But God, I ask you, you know the thoughts and the intents of the ones that I've called out. Move, I pray, in this service. And we give you honor, the glory, and the praise. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Usher's making your way, and you can remain standing where you can get to your pocketbooks. We will want to receive our uh, evening offerings. Uh, this helps the ministry of the church. It's part of revival, and thank you for what you're doing. Let's pray right now with the offering. Master, thank you for this offering. I know we've already prayed. But the gift and the giver, bless it likewise. Use it for the fervency of your gospel. We give you praise and honor in Jesus' name. Because, God, you are good. Amen. Is he good? Let's sing together, if you will. You are kind and easy to Your goodness draws me to your side. Your mercy calls me to be like you. Your favor is my life. Every day I'll awaken.
just sing that to the Lord on this Wednesday night. God, you are good. and praise Him for His goodness. Thank you, Jesus. God, I thank you for your goodness. God, I thank you for your faithfulness. Amen. We do serve a good God. He is a great God. Amen. You believe that tonight? Amen. He's been mighty, mighty good to us. Praise the Lord. You can be seated if you'd like. Thank you so much for everybody coming on this wonderful Wednesday. Uh, I do uh, echo Brother Wallace in welcoming you here tonight. Uh, please do keep Sister Pat in prayer. She takes us a little bit ago, and she's not feeling well tonight, so let's be praying for her. Amen. That God would touch her. And uh, don't forget tomorrow, just real quick, I want to make just a couple quick announcements, then I'll make the rest of the announcements after service. Uh, but tomorrow morning, ladies' prayer at 8 o'clock, and then at noon tomorrow, we've got a National Day of Prayer event on the steps of City Hall, uh, downtown Boonville, and so we would love for anyone that can to come, and if you're at work, but you get a lunch break, if you come, uh, they will have a box lunch, uh, I believe it's a Chick-fil-A box, and uh, so it's got a sandwich and uh, some chips and a little cookie in there, and uh, so a little place to get some drinks there, and so you can get your sustenance to take you through your lunch hour, and uh, it will be a brief. They have uh, maybe seven or eight of us that's going to be praying, and uh, then you can go by and pick up a box lunch. It may last 15 minutes, maybe, and uh, so you'll get in and out of there real quick, and they do that on purpose. But we are joining others around our country that will be doing that at the same time, and so prayer changes things. Amen? And unity is powerful. Amen. And then um, uh, Friday night, our Section 1 youth service uh, is going to be going on, and that's at 7.30. Brother Tony's going to be here, and we're excited about that. And I'll be going tomorrow and picking him up after we get done with uh, prayer service, and he's coming into Huntsville. And so uh, we'll be picking him up tomorrow, and he's going to be spending a few days here. But I just know that God's going to speak into our youth. But I want to invite our church family to come be a part of that service. Amen? Amen. I want to thank everyone that came Monday night. Man, we had such a great time at Spring Hill Church. And we had such a great representation of our church family. And I just want to again say thank you to our church family for coming and for worshiping. Amen. We just had a great time of worship together. And uh, amen. God is so good. And I just believe that even if revival is going to continue in our city, in our community, and I want to be a part of it, don't you? Amen. Sunday is Mother's Day. Yes, ma'am. My goodness. We had a great time. I, uh, we just, they were, you know, such a great group of people to be with that night and just a great time of fellowship, and I didn't realize all the connections that me and Brother McGee had, and so it's just amazing how God works things out. Amen. And we're going to continue tonight talking about stewardship, and uh, we didn't get quite done last Wednesday night, and I got myself in trouble last Wednesday night, and I was trying to get somebody else to come up here and take care of my notes and read them for me so I could get myself out of trouble, and nobody took me up on it, and so they let me stay in trouble by myself, and so... Uh, I, I'm going to try to get out of trouble next Wednesday, and so uh, praise God. Uh, but oh, happy anniversary, by the way, Sister Tina, Brother Michael. Happy anniversary, Amen. Y'all were both out of the sanctuary when we were talking about that Sunday, so we want to make sure to give y'all some honor tonight. Praise God. Everybody say stewardship. Um, good management or good stewardship of our bodies, and we're not going to talk about that again tonight, so nobody worry. Uh, our talents, our treasure, our time, us 
taking care of those things that God has blessed us with uh, is very important. That is how we uh, make contributions to the kingdom of God in the way that we take care of what God blesses us with, whether it be our bodies or our talent or our finances or our time. Uh, that is how we demonstrate our faithfulness to God. Amen. What we value most in life, um, regardless of what that is, I hope that we all value our relationship with God more than anything else. Uh, but we're all human too, so there's other things. If we're not talking spiritual, if we're talking other things that we might value in life, then regardless of how much we value or how much value we put on that, we're still held to the responsibility of being a good steward with it, right? And uh, so we've got to be, be aware of that because it's important for us as Christians to manage our lives differently than the world manages their lives. Amen. Sister Ben, I'm glad to see you here tonight. Glad you're feeling better. Amen. We love you. Appreciate you. Uh, because a Christian, by definition, is to be what? Christ-like. Um, and so what's important to us as Christians ought to be different than what's important to a person that's not trying to be Christ-like. And so stewardship is how we demonstrate our desires. And so I want to be a good steward of what God has blessed me with. Because, again, we may think it's our own, but it's really all belongs to, to God. And the church said amen. Amen. So we've got to recognize that the gift that God give us of our time, our talent, our treasure, our bodies, uh, it all comes from God. And so we dedicate those things back to him in the way that we steward, uh, steward those throughout our life. And so we talked about our temple uh, last week. And, again, we're not going to go back there. I'm just going to say we did that last week. And so if you want to find out, you can go back and watch that online, maybe if the Internet didn't take it down. And uh, so, uh, But we also talked about our talents, how we have to be good stewards of our talents, how we use what God's given us for his glory, for his kingdom. And to be a good steward of our talents, we do things that glorify God with them. We don't hide them. We don't withhold them. Um but we give it to God, and we use it for God's kingdom. We use it for God's glory, and we don't use it for worldly things. Amen? And so that's how we're a good steward. Tonight we're going to be talking about our treasure. We did a whole week last week talking about stewardship and didn't even talk about our treasure. Somebody say treasure. Amen. We have to be wise stewards of our financial resources, again, that God has given to every single one of us. Uh, Proverbs 23 and 4 says this, Labor not to be rich, seize from thine own wisdom. Verse 5, Wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle toward heaven. That's a mouthful. Romans 13, verse 7, let's look at that. Render, therefore... To all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Then Paul said this, Owe no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. And we're going to talk a little bit about it in a moment, but... Um, Sometimes, whenever we owe somebody something, it puts strain on relationships, right? And so, uh, it, it makes things weird. It shouldn't, but it does. But I think that's kind of what Paul is talking about, because sometimes owing can get in the way of loving. Uh, if you borrow money from a bank or from... Um, a lender, and they all of a sudden want their money back on those installments that you agree to pay monthly, and then maybe there's more month at the end of the money, and they're starting to make those phone calls saying they want that installment you said you would give them, and you're supposed to love that person, 
and yet they're starting to call you every day, and your love for them is quickly fading. Um, so I know nobody here has ever had to do that, or nobody's doing that, uh, but that, I think that's why Paul talks about, oh, no man, anything, but we'll talk more about it in our lesson later in our lesson. But when we come, when it comes to the understanding of Everything that we have is not ours, but it is God's. Um, that ought to change some things in the way that we handle it. Uh, that's why, that's, no, goodness, I can't get away from it. That's why last week when I was talking about our temple, uh, whatever we really, again, I, I promise, I was, I was convicted as much or more than anybody. As I, that's the reason I was like, somebody, somebody come read these notes and so we can get through this. And, uh, but how we take care of this temple when we understand that we are bought with a price, that it's God's. Um, we take care of it. Now, um, I try to take care of our vehicles. I, um, I try to, uh, they're, they're not always spotless, but they're, you're not too often going to get in our vehicle and find trash. Because every time I get out of my truck, I look around if there's any trash, even though it may not be swept out, but there's not going to be any trash in it. It may be dirty, but it's not going to be trashy. Now, that's my truck. I value that truck. Uh, I make payments on that truck. And so, uh, so I want to take care of it. I want to make sure it lasts. Um, and so... But also, I pastor a church, and so at any given time, anybody should be able to get in my truck, and I should have to be ashamed of somebody getting in my vehicle because I want to be a good steward of what's important to me. You say, Pastor, you're trying to tell me they clean my vehicle out. I'm just trying to tell us that we need to be good stewards of what we have and take care of it. Uh, take care of the stuff we have. Take care of our homes. Take care of our automobiles. Take care of things that we have. It, it, it's a reflection of the God that we serve. Everything that we do is a reflection of how we feel about our life. And so uh, it, it, it matters. And when we understand that we're not our own and all that we have is first given to us by God, then we have a better understanding of a biblical view concerning how we steward those things. Amen? And that's why when it comes to uh, the house of God, and, and I'm glad they're getting, I don't know, just do not open that door and take a step. Just FYI, you will face plant on some boards. And so uh, you, I'm glad that we're getting some work done around here that need to be done. Amen? I, 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 uh, I told y'all whenever I came here, I, I don't believe in having facilities that you can't maintain. And so, if, if say for if we didn't want to maintain facilities like we have, and it's very costly to maintain the facilities that we have and all that, but if we don't want to invest in maintaining them, then I would rather sell them and get rid of them and get a little another building somewhere that we would maintain. Because it's the house of God. The kingdom of God is represented by everything that's on this property. And so in the summertime, whenever that grass is growing, like right now these people think, Brother George is going to mow it for me tomorrow, so I appreciate that. Uh, but whenever in the summertime when the grass is growing, we can't always wait a week before we mow it again. We'll mow it twice in a week. Because we are a representation of, of God. And so, no matter how much investment or how much time that takes, we are trying to take care in the best way that we can what God has entrusted us with. And so, I am a firm believer when it comes to the house of God, the things of God. Amen. And I think we all agree on that because we do have a nice church. We do have nice church grounds. And so, I'm thankful for that. And so, but we got to understand that it is God's. And so, we've got to take care of what is God. And if we think that about the house of God, then we also have to know that we are God's. And our treasure is God's. And our talents are God's. And so we've got to take care of them. Amen. Somebody say treasure. Treasure can include our time. It can include our bodies. It can include our relationships or talents and whatever else. But all these things are treasures 
that God has entrusted us with. God trusted us with it. He lets us use it. It's His, but He lets us partake in it. And our financial treasure, all for whatever reason, becomes a delicate subject. Then I've been sitting here for the last seven or eight minutes. I've, I was talk, trying to talk about treasure, and I still ain't got to it. Because it's, it's so sensitive to so many people. And it shouldn't be. Because it's not yours. It's God's. It's not mine. It's God's. And so I shouldn't be sensitive about it. When it comes to it shouldn't hurt me to talk about giving back what's God's. But it's our instinct to be protective of our money. It's natural. It's amazing. Isn't that amazing? How natural it is to be so protective over something that's so supernatural. You, you mess with somebody's money. You let a store charge you an extra 50 cents. You know, they got all those self-checkouts now, but they was at Lowe's picking up some materials, and I heard that little dinger go off an extra time, and I was like, I checked that little screen they had up there. And I was like, I didn't give a one of them. And, uh, but she, y'all could tell she was kind of flustered by it. So I was like, you know what, I can use another one. So I went and got another one to make it easier. To, but I wanted to make sure to get what I was paying for. Amen. And so that natural protection we have of our money the only way that we can fix that is to reframe our understanding of whose it really is. Somebody say reframe. Uh, that means some things have to be tore down and then put back a different way. In order for some people to be biblically responsible or biblical stewards of their finances, the thinking of a, some people has to be completely torn down to understand that this is what God wants me to do, so I've got to start doing it this way. What do you mean it means I have to completely tear down framework? Because so many times, this is what I have learned since I've been pastor. So many times, so many people live on the shoestring budget. When I say shoestring budget, I'm not talking about being wise with your finances. I'm talking about you get as much debt as you can that your paycheck will handle. Um, and, so, and so in other words, Let's just use this as a simple example. If you only have $1,000 a month coming in, let's just say that. Um, so if you got $1,000 a month coming in, but then uh, you get a big old phone bill. You get vehicle. You got to have cable, you know. And that stuff's not cheap, so you got $114, $140. A, I mean, I don't have, I'm just trying to say I'm, that's what I've been told and stuff. Um, and so if you got $400 in your car payment, you got $150 on your house internet or cable or whatever you got, and then you got utilities, you got to pay $200 a month for water, lights, and sewer, and all that. And Well, my Lord, before you know it, you got over a thousand dollars a month coming out of your bank account, and yet you only make a thousand dollars a month. And so, uh, let me say it like this: Everybody remember when those five thousand dollar checks were coming out for stimulus money from COVID? Uh, I remember it because 
I got one, and then I, I, several people did because they tied on it. They did what they, and so I remember when it happened. And so, praise God. Um, but I can't tell you how many phone calls we got from people just within three or four days of all those checks going out. And nobody had any money. And I know all them checks just got sent out. And so I was like, how do you go from not having a job or only getting eight or $900 a month and making it to all of a sudden getting a big stimulus check of $2,500 or $5,000 and then just less than a week later, now you don't have any money. You just got five months worth of salary in one check. But in a week, you ain't got no money. The sales of four-wheelers and motorcycles and TVs and the shopping. Woo. And so what could have been a blessing all of a sudden became a curse. Because it was a lack of stewardship. And that wasn't just worldly people that happened to, but good church people. That money was there one day, and then a week later it wasn't there. Everybody say stewardship. We have to reframe our understanding about what it's all about. Amen? But think about finances, the strain that it puts on marriages and relationships and friendships. I say finances. And I, I just have to believe that God knew that we was going to have difficulty with money. I, I think he knew that we was going to spend a lot of time working hard to earn that money. Some would. And I think God even knew that we was going to potentially overspend. And there's a lot of people that spend a lot of time worrying about money. Our attitude, somebody say my attitude, towards stewarding the treasure in our life is a spiritual matter with eternal consequences. It matters for eternity. Somebody say eternity. And so we've got to make wise choices with our money and with our finances, and we've got to think about when we make purchases. We don't just go make purchases just to make them. We've got to think about it. Amen? Some think longer than others thinking. I, I've been there too. And uh, anybody ever got something like, man, why did I get that? Praise God. But we've got to live within our means. That's the most important part. Somebody say within our means. And financial stewardship involves the privilege. Everybody say the privilege of giving. It's a privilege to give. It's more blessed to give than to receive. It is a privilege to give. Giving is not just confined to the church, although you should begin there because it all, needs to, God needs to get his part first. But we don't need to always be that person or that group of people that the only money we spend or the only money we give is to the church. There's people in our community that need help. And that, that's where a lot of our benevolent giving is given to people out in the community that never even come to church. And that, that, you know what? Some people got different opinions about stuff like that. But I just think it's part of ministry. Because if we never gave or we never tried to help people, then that would be a bad witness for the people that we're trying to reach. Amen? Now, again, we're supposed to be wise stewards, and so we're, we're careful how we give, but we do give a lot to the community, and that's okay. Amen? When we see somebody in need, or maybe we know of a family that's in desperate need of something in their family, then we should be willing to do what we are able to do. Amen? Now, um, I want to quickly hit this because there's not a lot of people that have this kind of problem, but 
for those that do, this, this needs to be said. Some people can give and try to help others too much at the point of their own demise. That's not being a good steward either because you can't help with what you don't have. A lot of people aren't going to say stuff like that. But again, we have to be wise stewards. Even with our giving. Amen? And so again, I'd love to help everybody that needs help in our city. I would love to build a homeless shelter and be able to just house people and do that. And one day, I, I believe we're going to be able to participate in something like that. But right now, we just can't. And so we're not going to go borrow money to try to do something just because, hey, we want to do it. we got to be wise. Amen? And so um, everybody say financial stewardship. We have to be willing to help. Paul said, let your moderation be known unto all men. In other words, there's people in our world that they spend like crazy. They're, I'm, they're, well, I ain't going to ask you to raise your hand, but there are people that there's different kind of people. They're spenders, and there's those that don't spend you got two extremes. you got the extreme that spends everything, and you got the extreme that won't spend anything, and then everybody else falls in between. But there's extremes on both sides of that. But Paul said, let your moderation be known unto all men. And just that verse was written just two verses after he instructed the church to help other people. Everybody say wise stewards. Wise stewards, we prioritize giving and we set a budget, and we live within our means. we got to do it. It's important for all of us to consider the different types of giving, whether it be biblical or charitable. Tithing. Let's look at that. Malachi chapter 3, verse number 10. Bring you all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. We have a mandate from heaven to pay our tithes. I should say give our tithes. Amen? He said for us to bring our 10% to the storehouse and prove him. Everybody say 10%. What's that mean? That means at the top of the paycheck, if it's $1,000, before all FICA and Social Security and Medicare and all of that, insurance, all that comes out of it, it's 10% of my income into the house of God. Amen? And so we've got to give it as unto the Lord. God challenges us to return 10% to him through the storehouse. Everybody say, give it to him. Now, again, everything we have comes from where? We can work. We can pick up our check. We can go to the bank and let it process. That's my money. No. It's God that gave us the strength to go to do the job. And if we look at it any other way, we're out of order in our life. Will a man rob God? I don't want to be a thief. Amen? I don't want thieves in my family. I don't want thieves in the church. I don't want thieves in leadership. It's God. And it's God's will that all of us tithe. Everybody. That everybody gives the same tithe. It's 10%. So the person that may give $1,000 a week, if they make $10,000, they're not giving any more than the person that may give $5 a week if they make $50. Because everybody's giving the same tithe. God is, he's smart. He's got it figured out to where we don't, we can't compare ourselves among ourselves because it's, Everybody is just based on faithful or not faithful. 
so you don't have to hold your head down if you say, I can't give like they give. If you're giving faithfully, you're giving the same as a person that... Moses said to the children of Israel, he said, I want you to give. Deuteronomy 16, 17, he said, Every man shall give as he is able, everybody say, as he's able, according to the blessing of the Lord thy God, which he hath given thee. In other words, everybody gives as is given. Everybody say faithfulness. We give as we are given. And so Moses is telling these children of Israel, according to how God it blesses you, that's how you give. The more blessings, the more you give. It's a cycle. But it's all wrapped up in one word, faithful. Jesus said, give and it be given unto you in Luke 6. Everybody say, give and it will be given unto you. I don't want to be the person that's always asking for. I want to be the person that gives too. Amen? A couple things. Jesus said, everybody say, Jesus said, Press down, shaking together, running over. If you were to take a bunch of rocks and put them in a dump truck, or if you were to take a bunch of chips, we all know how the chip bags are, right? They look full, but they're never full, right? There's a lot of air in the bag. But if you were to take those chips, and it may even look like the the bag, if you got the little, you know, I like to get the uh, tortilla chips. Because I like salsa. And Sister Pat's been hooking me up with some homemade salsa. And uh, it's one of those blessings that I give her an empty jar and she gives me a full jar. <laughs> but uh, you get tortilla chips, you can see in that little plastic, and it looks like, man, that chip's way up there, but there's really a lot of space that's just wasted in between that because of the shape and the size. But if you were to take those chips and do what I don't like to do and just mash them together. Finish them off. Before church, I had tacos. And I, the way I eat hard shell tacos, you got to mix all those little shells up and you got to put them in a bowl. Then you put the stuff in there. But those big old taco shells, if I wouldn't have broken them up, they wouldn't have fit in the bowl. But when you break them up, you can put more in there. I can tell you that I, from experience. And so, because when you, you press something down, when you shake it together, it makes room for more. And so when I eat tacos, I always get more than I can eat because it just, it's been shaken together and broken. It all goes together. What are you saying, Pastor? That when God blesses us, he doesn't waste any room. And if we want the blessings of God, if we want that kind of blessing that is pressed down and shaken together in our life, then we have to give to him that way. And we have to be that kind of giver where there's no other room. That's what Jesus said. Press down, shaken together, running over. Jesus said, for with the same measure you meet with all, it's going to be measured to you again. So if you want to give a spoon-filled blessing, you're going to get a spoon-filled blessing. But if you want to give a shovel full of blessing, you're going to get a shovel full of blessing. I like getting shovel full of blessing. And so I don't mind giving shovel full of blessing. I don't mind reaching deep into my bank account or deep into our finances and and being a blessing to somebody because I know I've been there. That God's going to, with a shovel, bring it back over into my life. And so I don't don't worry about it. If God lays a number on my heart, I don't care if it puts me down to dollars in our bank account. I know that God is going to put it back in there because he's faithful. But we got too many that are happy getting spoon-filled blessings. And it's, I'm blessed by God. You you are being blessed by God. But, man, if you really want to tap into who God really is, start getting your shovel out. Whenever we take up missions offerings, whenever we take up special building fund projects, get you a shovel out next time and see how God will operate in your life. 
I want a shovel blessing. And tithing and offering is not an afterthought to a Christian. Let me get all my bills paid and see if I got enough left. No, no, no. A wise steward puts God first. Amen? And I want to say thank you again to this church family for being faithful with your giving. Amen. We are able to have what we have and do what we do because you are faithful with your giving. And I again want to say thank you so much for being faithful. Look at your neighbor and say, thank you for being faithful. Amen. We we have to be faithful. It can't be an afterthought. And there's many that you say, I've been I don't I've been seeing them, they ain't giving nothing in the office late. We got this electronic giving, it's called tithing. Several of you give on tithing, and I want to say thank you so much for doing that. And uh, I will just quickly say this for those of you that pay the fees, uh, on tithely, if you put your bank account information in there, it's about half the amount when it's concerning fees. Uh, so for instance, on every twenty bucks it's like fifty one cents compared to sometimes It'll be close to a dollar if you just do it on your debit card or credit card. So just uh, want to give you a heads up. It's about half the amount that you have to pay in fees if you use your bank account instead of the other way. Anyhow, just for those that don't pay the fees, I just want to give you a heads up. <laughs> and, uh, and, again, either way is fine with us. I'm not pushing you to do that. I'm just letting you know that there's a cheaper way to do that. But we give to God first. Amen? And so when we do so, he takes care of us and returns our gifts with blessings that have been pressed down and shaken together and running over. But we can't even pray for a financial blessing in our life if we're not first faithful. How can I go into the gas station and sneak me my sneaker bars and Twix bars in my pocket and walk out of the store and then come in and say, hey, you mind giving me a. But whenever we say, God, I need you to bless me on my job. I need you to bless me in my finances. And yet we're not being faithful with our tithe. You're asking God to bless a thief. He's not going to do it. You're asking, but you're asking to miss. But be faithful to God and see that God, he said, prove me that I won't open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. Prove me. So if you're not being faithful with your tithes, I'm not here to point any fingers at you, but I'm here to tell you, I pray that the Word of God would convict you today, amen, because I personally believe, according to the Word of God, because I don't think He's going to let any robbers in heaven. If we're not paying our tithes, we're going to have a hard time hearing Him say, well done. That's kind of stout, Brother Sutton. Well, I'm just trying to tell you what the Word says. Amen? We have to be careful with debt, too. Amen? Financial stewardship causes us to be aware of where we are financially. That means what kind of debts do we have? What kind of debts do we want? What kind of saving are we doing? Amen? We've got to be careful with debt. Paul told them, he said, pay your bills. Don't, don't be getting caught up by financial hardship. As Christians, I, I, I've been there. I've had financial struggles in my life. And then through, down through the years, I've been there. I know what it's like to have financial struggles. But I also know that every time I've been in a situation where I've had a financial struggle, it was all back to the choices that I made. Not because God wasn't blessing me, but it was choices that I made. That I wasn't saving like I could have saved because I was spending more than I should have spent. And so I can't go to God and say, God, how can you let this happen? Let let this happen? Because he, if we're good stewards, we know where it's all going. Amen? And so it's very, very important we understand that. Solomon, he said, to prepare for hard times. That's why it's good to budget your monthly or your weekly salary in a way that you can have money if you go a week or two without money or a month or two. 
I would encourage you to have several months of needed income. That may take a little while to build up, but if we get our spending under control, we can do that. If whenever, well, I'm going to be quiet. Oh, glory. But there's times in all of our lives where our finances will change. And so Solomon said, you've got to work hard and you've got to save to prepare for these times. We've got to be diligent to properly plan our futures. Amen? And so it's a balance, but it's part of godly stewardship. We've got to balance our lives in a way that we can make sure that we're being good stewards with what's got us. Again, whatever's returned to us is going to be what? I say press down. Everybody say shaking together. And so, well, I, I just don't know if I'm going to give my tithe this time because I don't know what's going to happen next week or next month. We can't be wise or we can't be faithful based on fear of tomorrow. But we choose to steward our treasure every day the way God wants us to do. Somebody say stewardship. We've got to be good stewards with our bodies, with our talents, with our time, with our treasure. Everybody say our time. We've got to be wise stewards of the time that God's given us. Amen. James 4, 14. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It's even a what? A vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. Paul told the church in Ephesus in Ephesians 5, he said, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time. Because the days are what? Evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. We've got to know what God's will is for our life. And that's to be a good steward with what's been given to us, including our time. We've been given a space of time. We talk about the end time. We talk about this this time where God's going to fulfill all of his promises and his purpose, but we are in that time. God has given us a space of time. How are we going to use it? Everybody gets 168 hours or, excuse me, they get cut. Everybody. However, each of us has a choice. <laughs> what we do with that 168 hours. Like other things, our time is a gift from God. It belongs to God. And so we have to regularly look at how am I spending my time? What am I doing? How, what can I change about how I'm spending my time? I'm wore out. Well, how could I have done my day different? Because how we budget our time is a critical component when it comes to our stewardship of what God's blessed us with. I don't struggle with giving. I don't struggle with time, with treasure. I don't struggle with much, but I promise you, this one is one that I really struggle with. You say, Pastor, what do you mean struggle with your time? I'm saying we can make ourselves so busy and then look back and say, man, where did time go? How many ever said something like that? Where did time go? Where did they go? It went where we spent it. Anybody ever say, where'd that money go? I thought I had a $20 bill in there. Where'd it go? You spent it. You just wasn't paying attention. We do the same thing with our time. We spend it. We just don't pay attention too often. But we all have the same amount of it. And our schedules can get so cluttered with stuff that may be good, it just may not be the best use of our time. I say stewardship. We've got to be good stewards. Good stewards. We have to often ask ourselves this kind of question. What am I doing that has an eternal impact? What am I doing today that has an eternal impact? Because life passes quickly. Let's all stand. James said it's like a vapor. It's here, but then it's gone. 
time is a currency we have that we can spend to demonstrate being a good steward to the kingdom of God and to our community. I don't have time to serve at the church. I don't have time to, to teach a Bible study. I don't have time to do this. I don't have time to do that. We've got to make sure we make time for things that are godly amidst our busy schedule. Amen? With our bodies, with our talents, with our treasure, and with our time. Amen. I pray that this, this, these last couple of Wednesday nights have been something that's challenged us. And I, again, want to encourage you. If you're, if you're not being a good steward of your finances, when it comes to tithing and giving and offering, um, and you say, I would do it, Pastor, but I just... Can't, I, you know, I've made some poor decisions, some poor choices, and I just I can't I can't afford to. I again want to say you cannot afford not to give. But if it's truly a hardship, I sincerely, you can just call me, text me, and I sincerely want to sit down and meet with you. Because I want you to hear him say, "Well done." And so whatever we got to do is arrange to to where. Again, I've, I've given people back their tithe. Now, I don't want everybody to come and say, Pastor, I need my tithes back. But I'm telling you, I, want, I would rather you give your tithes than me give it back to you. And I might be sometime you give it, and I may not give it back to you. Because I don't want you giving it say, just because you know you're going to get it back. I use a spirit of discernment on that. And you just have to trust me. Does that make sense? But sincerely, I mean that with all of my heart. I would rather you hear him say, well done. I'd rather you give it to me and me give it back to you in some form. Because you cannot afford not to. You want to hear him say, well done. Be faithful with your giving. Be faithful with your giving. Amen. I, I'm telling you. You know what? It won't be too many times I'll have to do that anyway because God's principles has never failed. Has never failed. Never. Not in my life. And there's many people that's here tonight that can testify. Man, I'm telling you, I just don't know where it all comes from. It's because you're faithful. And God's word cannot return void. And some of those blessings he returns, pressed down, shaken together. God, I love you so much. God, I pray, Lord, you would help us to be found faithful. God, to be good stewards of our bodies, Lord, these temples that you have given us to house your spirit on this earth. God, I pray, Lord, that we would be good stewards with them. Lord, our talents, God, everything that you've given us the ability to do, I pray, God, that we would do it as unto you. God, I pray we would be good stewards with our treasure, that we wouldn't try to be stingy or greedy. But, Lord, help us to, Lord, live our life with both of our hands wide open. Lord, as you give, let us be willing to give. God, let us be willing to give in the same measure that you give us because we know, Lord, if we give a spoon-filled blessing, we're going to get a spoon-filled blessing in return. But if we'll get our shovels out, a shovel of faith, God, and we'll start pouring out blessings into other people's life, Lord, that you will pour it back into our lives and help us continue to live our life that way as a conduit to be a blessing to each other, to our community. God, that we might share this gospel around our world. God, I pray you would help us to be good stewards with our time. We'll be careful to praise you in Jesus' name. And the church said amen. Amen. God bless you. Look here, I was a good steward of our time tonight. It's not quite 8 o'clock. Praise God. That's the first time I've done that in a while. Amen. I love you. i got to make just a couple of quick announcements. And... Uh,